Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're closing in on Christmas with a puzzle called Mozzarella by Perladle. I've done a Perladle puzzle before, at least one, I think. I remember it was very, very fine indeed. And this one's been recommended to us a few times and it only has two stars out of five for difficulty. So I might be in for a relatively easy day today after some monsters recently. Um, a really weird rule set as well. These these purple lines are Renban lines, but they're toroidal in the sense that they can pop off the edge of the grid and come back on the other side, which sounds absolutely crazy. Um, but I'll read you the rules, of course, in a moment or two. I've got some things to mention first. Um, where shall I begin? Uh, let's begin with the birthdays actually. Well actually it's not a birthday. I need to say congratulations to Kat. And Kat I believe you've just received your master's degree in political science from the University of Louisville over there in K Kentucky. I hope I'm not wrong about this um, but if I am right congratulations. That seems like an occasion indeed for cake. And how, my, how do I know this? Well, your boyfriend, Justin, told me. That's how I know. Um, so kudos um, to you both over there. And I hope that you have, well, I hope you, you've been able to celebrate appropriately. Um, also, today there is a birthday. And it's the birthday of Lara, who has turned 22, I believe. And I know this because your sister, uh, Giulia, I think that's how you pronounce. In, in English, it's Julia, but I think it might be Giulia. Uh, over there in Brazil anyway, uh, in a city or a town called Curitiba, I want to say. I'm afraid I don't know that place. I haven't heard of it. But anyway, Lara, I hope you're able to have an absolutely brilliant day today. Happy 22nd birthday indeed. Next, I'm going to start with, I'm going to mention something frivolous. Now, this was brought to us by Juice, J Julius Picklemuller, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Julius, who I think either studies or lectures maths at the University of Munich, where they, um, they have, have these information sheets, uh, which they put up in the toilets. And you could see one of them there, Das Klopapier or something. Um, and um, this caught Julius's eye because um, actually, if we hone in, on the information on said uh, on said paper that frequents the toilets in the Munich, Munich University, you will find an explanation, a very nice explanation, I will say, of the Fistemafel ring. So this is now, <laughs> this is, I don't know what to make of this. I think, I think it's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, but it certainly amused me anyway. And I fully, yeah, I fully endorse that proof. Very nice indeed. So whoever's come up with that, it's a very elegant way of presenting it. Uh, there you can see the finished product down there. I hope most of you who watch these videos are well familiar with the Vistamafel ring. And speaking of the great man, this is the Sudoku event of the year. Yesterday evening, it was six o'clock. I meant to release it at four o'clock, but I didn't get organized in time. At six o'clock yesterday evening, we released the Vistamafel Sudoku hunt. This is the first one that has ever been. Um, it's an absolutely magnificent collection of puzzles. As some of you, I hasten to say, already know um, because you've solved the whole thing. I mean, this is just ridiculous to me. Um, so this is this is sort of the front page. Um, but anyway, I need to say a huge congratulations to Jan Gazelius. Who, who sent in the first entry after a mere nine hours. I think it was just under nine hours. That is some stellar solving. Nathan Gilbert, Andrea Pachera, Harrison Beer, Jeff Frank, Surab Das, Surab's comment, um, by the way, which I think summed up, uh, summed up the mood, was that I'm just blown away by the brilliance of these puzzles. Surab, I'm with you there. Um, Mew Rocks, Cody Newman, Brian Scott, Brett Gator, Anthony Anderson, and Adam Jaziri. Adam Jaziri was one of the people actually who recommended mozzarella, the puzzle we're going to be trying today. But that is the entries we've already received to this hunt. So this is, by the way, this is our Christmas present. Um, so Mark and I decided we want to do something for all our patrons to say thank you for your support over the last year. And what better way than with a Christmas Sudoku hunt from Fistemafel? Absolutely stellar stuff. So if you're a patron, do get over there and check it out. You will not regret it. Um, 
And then the only other thing I need to mention is, of course, our competition for December, which was the Cryptic Scriptures of the Secret Snake Society. That is now over. Um, and I still have some names to read out from that. So very well done um, to Dan and Megan um, Mul Mulash, I think it is. And very best to your one-year-old daughter, Isabella, as well. Um, Ian Van Delft, John Beam, Mark Salmon, Flora and Edie ha Harrington, Bastian Anderson, Caroline Tengblad, um, Taryn Atavar, Oystein Lihaug, or Lihaug, I think, Robbie the Belgian, VJ Toko, AJ, A, no, AG, AG, not AJ, AG, Leonardo Trigiani, Mark Wallace, and Pamela Skinner. That you all sent in the correct entries for finishing the whole hunt, and therefore you are awesome solvers, one and all. Very well done indeed. Um, now, let's have a look at mozzarella and see what's going on with this. What are the rules of Palladal's puzzle? We're going to have to concentrate on this because this is weird. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a black dot must contain digits in a 1 to 2 ratio, i.e. one digit will be double the other. So let's look at this one. If this square was a 2, this square could be a 1 or it could be a 4. We've just got to make sure one digit is double the other on black dots. Um, Purple lines must contain a set of consecutive non-repeating digits. OK, well, that's normal. But then it's got a semicolon. It says, however, lines that have endpoints on the edges of the grid might wrap around orthogonally. I'm going to turn my phone onto silent because otherwise WhatsApp will get annoying. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Um, might wrap around orthogonally and continue on the other side through the endpoints, e.g. row 9, column 6 could join to the line in row 1, column 6, thereby creating a six-cell purple line. So it might do that, it might not. There's an, um, there was a picture on Logic Masters Germany. So this is an example of what could happen. So you can see that this two, it seems like it's a two-cell line, but it can pop off like a torus and come on the other side and become a four-cell line. Um, but it must always do that orthogonally. And orthogonally is in capital letters. So what's that trying to say it can't do? So it can't go diagonally or something. I think it's trying to rule out there. So, OK, so if that's, I see. So it's trying to say that line can't join to that cell because as this one pops off the grid it doesn't pop up sort of above um, column six it pops it can only pop up there so if this line continues yeah so if that line continues it could only continue there I think is what it's saying this looks like a <laughs> a demented clown laughing at me. Um, anyway, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video, as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. He says, and his brain gives him nothing. Um, I am... You know what I was about to do? I was about to make an instant error. Well, what might be an instant error? I was about to pencil mark five into one of those four cells, and that's not right. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Why is that not? Well, why do we not know that there's a five in one of those four cells? Well, let's think about what's going on here. So on a normal five-cell Renban line or five-cell purple line, we, we know that this must contain five sequential digits from the digits one to nine. And however you carve up the digits one to nine, if you take a continuous sequence of five digits, you'll include a five in the line. And while it's true to say there's a five on this line, the problem is that this line could pop off the grid here and come back on here. So it could be a nine cell line. That could all be one line. And therefore, the five on it might be over there. And that is absolutely crazy. So that is not a valid. Oh, five, right, five, right. Let's try five down here instead. Something I think is always true is that you can't put five on a black dot. Because if we try and put five on the black dot, what are we going to put 
opposite the black dot. Well, it's going to have to be a, di a one of these digits needs to be double the other. So this is either a two and a half or a 10 and they aren't valid Sudoku digits. So five in box seven is in one of those two cells. Um, hmm. Good, good grief. There's nothing here. Is Oh, no. OK, let's try the same thing in box three. Again, I can't put five on black dots. So five is on this purple line, which, which might extend out there. Oh, for goodness sake. OK, maybe the correct strategy then is not to do this. Maybe the correct strategy is to label the lines that cannot be toroidal. That one can't be toroidal. It never sits right. Yeah, this this line is not toroidal because it never hits the edge of the grid. Let's um, is that a bit too garish to make it dark blue? Let's make it. Maybe we make it purple because that's OK. Then it's just extra purplage. That never hits the edge of the grid. That never hits the edge of the grid. That never hits the edge of the grid. Um, that does. What about this one? That would, oh no, it can. <laughs> that one can pop off, pop off at the top of column two and drop in there again. Okay, so that one can drop in here. This one can drop in here. Oh, that one does that. We've already looked at that. That one we know can. That that one can as well. Oh goodness me. That one. Oh, this right. That one can't. I don't think. Because that would be there, wouldn't it? And that doesn't seem to be a line. So that one is a normal line. This one can join with that one. This one. Ah, right. Let's let's highlight that one just for a moment. Now, again, it's the end point that would have to jump off and jump back on again. And that doesn't seem to have an, end, an equivalent end point in box two. So I think that one's OK. That one isn't, that one isn't. Right, so those those lines we've just highlighted are normal. We don't have to worry about the torus. Now my brain is telling me that that square is a 1, 5 or a 9. That feels right, doesn't it? Because if we've got two continuous sequences of four digits in box 5, how could this not be one five or nine? It it is one five or nine. I can sort of I can sort of sense it. I mean, if we try and make that a two, for example, where do we put the one now in the box? And the problem is the one has to be on a line where it will need a two because it needs to be on a line with sequential digits. So that's not a two. It's the same problem if it's a three. There's going to be a one and a two on a line, but that line will need a three because it's a four cell line. If that's a four, exactly the same problem. So I think the only things you can get away with here are going to be 1, 5 and 9. So, for example, if this was 5, you could have a 1, 2, 3, 4 and a 6, 7, 8, 9. If this was 9, it could be a 1, 2, 3, 4 and a 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 1, 5 or 9. And what we want it to be is 1 or 9 because that will fix this line. Okay, I've got nothing here. I'm going to try this. I'm going to, I'm going to resort to trying black dot logic because I can't seem to get anything. So let's try the smiley face um, where I know that digit is a two or a four by black dot logic. And that's because what we've got this constraint. It's a common constraint in Kropke puzzles. If you have sequential black dots, um, let's try and make this a one, for example. If that's a one, that will be a two. And that will be a four. That's the only way you could fill the line. You could also have two, four, eight, although actually that might not work here. Um, but what you can't do is some other black dot digits that would ordinarily work for, for just a single black dot. You could have a three and a six. But if you have three, six, you can't fill this cell because it would have to be 12 or back to three again. And that would put two threes in the box. Um, so if you if you try the possibilities you'll find that there's always always either one two four or two four eight so there's always a two or a four in the center of course we don't know which way round it goes so these side digits have to be from one two four and eight 
but yes but okay let me let me just think about that again because what i was thinking is if this was a two four eight line so if we make this digit four then in some order these two squares are two and eight and uh oh no but they're on a line oh i was about to say that's obviously not possible because this cell cannot be cannot simultaneously be three four five six and seven however we extend the line possibly <laughs> into box nine and that would give us that's still not enough two three four five six no that's still not enough um so this is wrong because if we did do this even if we extend the line and we make all of that the same line we have to join two and eight on this line with sequential digits so we need the digits two three four five six seven and eight that's seven digits and there's only six cells on the line so that's not going to work um so so that's not a, right we've actually got a digit then that's a two this is a one four pair and now well this is perfect this is absolutely perfect because let me get rid of that yellow for a moment and let's think about what this digit is can this line exist as just a three cell line no because this cell would have to be simultaneously the digits two and three and that's that's not possible for many reasons you can't have schrodinger cells you can't have digits that are similar well, cells that are simultaneously two in two different states of existence at least not in this puzzle and it could never have been a two anyway so so that means this line must extend this this line segment can't extend in either of those two cells so this is where the torus comes in it extends here and it's got a one on it so we now know that these squares here have to be the digits one to well they've got to be the we, we know the sequence is one two three four five six because it's a six cell line with a one on it we know that's not a two or a five so that cell is three or six but this line has to contain both the two the five and whichever of three and six is not used in this cell now this black dot digit can't have five on it because that cell can't be ten or two and a half and i want to say that these two digits are interesting now yeah okay now if we think about the nature of these two digits for a moment what what can those digits be and the answer is only seven eight and nine because because we know the yellow digits are the digits one to six well these two cells see all of those digits but they see these three and they see those three in their box so these digits that, that can't be a five these digits are seven eight and nine and we know there's a five on this line so do we know whether this line extends over here or not so if this was five, five six seven eight so if if there was a nine on in one of these two cells then in order to reach five on the line we would need more cells and that would extend the line over here but if there's only eight on the line you could have eight seven six five maybe that would be a three and that would be a nine and that might work wow wow okay <laughs> that oh that was that's a disappointing domino that domino's let itself down i think because that felt like it was going to be important right so two is in one of these three cells by sudoku because we know there's a two here we know there's a five down here as well so two <laughs> the problem with these lines the lines that can dip off the edge is that they are so flexible as a result of their their possible toroidal nature right let's look at this digit then perhaps this is a black dot digit that's either right well it's either a three six if this is three or six this must be three or six if this is two this must be one or four. Oh dear okay 
Oh dear, oh dear. I don't know really where to look now. Is it the black dots down there? Don't like the sound of that. That that is akin to a white crop key dot, isn't it? Because this is a purple two cell line. In other words, these are consecutive digits. So one of these is odd. And odd digits are quite hard to put on black dots. Um, you can't put five, seven or nine on black dots because the other, the other day, if you put five on, we've already thought about that. If you put seven on, the other digit has to be 14 or three and a half. If you put nine on, the other digit has to be 18 or four and a half. So this is either, oh, well, it's not one, to, right, it's not one, two. Let's just have a quick look at that. If the odd digit on this white dot is one, the problem is that in order for this domino to be consecutive, it must be the digits one and two. But what do you put on the other side of the black? Imagine that's the one. This cell here has to be a two because these have to be one of these digits has to be double the other. And that's going to put two twos in the box. So that's interesting. So in fact, this has a three on it, which is which means that has a six on it. Um. Uh, something's gone. Have I made a mistake here now? What on earth is going on now? What? Oh, I s right. No, uh, this is lovely. <laughs> That's very clever. Okay. So this is telling us we do have a torus here for this line. Because if this was a two cell line, the, the, the digit that goes with the six on the line would be a five or a seven, which I've just said can't go on a black dot. So this line cannot be only a two cell line. Therefore, it must extend over there. And that is a new a new version of a line. That's a bit garish today, isn't it? Let's try. Um, let's try gray. So this is now a four cell line. Six, five, four, three. So it never has two on it. We know there's a six on it, but it can't have a two on it because it would need to be a five cell line. Um, and the counterpart digit down here is a two or a four. Now, do we know which of those it is? Yes, we do actually, that's lovely. Right, let's, let's switch tack and say, what is this black dot? Well, this black dot doesn't have a three on it anymore. And that means that square cannot be anything well this cannot be a three six pair so we can get rid of three six from here we can get rid of three six from here this square becomes a two which is going to allow us to tidy up some pencil marks i still don't know what this square is but i do know now that the consecutive digit with three back over on the left hand side of the grid is oh i do know what that is this has got to be a three four pair that's got to be a one and just a sec while I think about that. Well, that means that the black dot. That, oh no, it doesn't. Oh no, it's that's beautiful. Again, that's really good again. Okay, so I got rid of the two from this cell, but by exactly the same logic, the digit that's opposite the four on the black dot can't be a two because this is a four cell line. Two, three, four, five, six requires a five cell line. So there's an eight opposite. Um, the four here. So this now is getting constrained. Now we know that in order for this toroidal line to be consecutive, there is a seven in one of those two cells, which is very nearly interesting. So it's a seven and a five or a nine, depending on which, whether this line goes sort of starts at nine or starts at eight. If it starts at eight, there could be a five over here. That would be useful. Um, that cell now can't be a nine, can it? If that's nine, this line has to be eight, seven, six here. And that's definitely ruled out. So that's not nine. 
So this is one or five. But whatever it is, I want to say that that that's really weird and rather wonderful as well. I think this is a two, three, four, triple, whatever happens. Because if this is a five, these digits have to in some way be consecutive with five without using six. So they would be two, three, four. But if this is a one, then in order to be consecutive with one, they have to be two, three, four as well. So that is two, three and four. That is not three. This is now a five by Sudoku because it's not six either. So that square is not five. So now we've got a weirdity. Look, those two squares are different because they are on the same toroid lines. <laughs> These are not the same number. Um, this is no longer able to be five. Look. What does this mean? Where, where does one go in row seven? It's got to go there. So that's a one. This square is a seven or a nine. One, ooh, one is now one of those cells. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, well, it's not on this one. Because if one is on this line, that's got to be a one, two, three, triple. And there's going to be far too many cells in box eight that have to be selected from the digits one, two, three, and four. There should only be four such cells and there would be six such cells. So there would be a repeated digit and that would break the puzzle. So we take one out of there. We put plonk one in here. Now that means, oh, that well, that's lovely. Ah, uh, this puzzle's quality. This is a quality idea. Th this this could really capture people's imagination, I think. I can see more of these puzzles being popular. Look, that one is now seeing that cell, so that becomes five. Um, but the thing I think is perhaps more interesting is what on earth is going on with this little line now? Now, that cannot be a line on its own because then it will need to have two and three on it again. That means the line goes off on, it, off on a journey up to the top of the grid. I'm going to resort to blue this time. Oh, no, am I? It's a bit garish. Let's try green instead. That's still a bit garish, isn't it? Um, let's try orange, maybe. Yeah, orange. Orange is a bit better. I can see that very clearly. Now, this line we know has got the digits one, two, three, four, five, and six on it because it's a consecutive sequence and there's a one on the line. Well, those digits there cannot be two, three, and four. So they are five and six and there's a five here. So that's five, that's six. This is a two, three, four triple. Uh, this is a black dot digit. So that cell is one, two, four, or six or eight. Oh no, that's just a silly pencil mark. Sorry, I, I thought I was going to be able to restrict that in some way, and that was totally bogus. Um, in this column, we have a seven, eight, nine triple left to place. Now that means look in the look in the central box now. We know that one of these strings is a one, two, three, four string. Well, it's not that one. So that must be a, this must be a one, two, three, four string. This must be a six, seven, eight, nine string. The six is definitely vertical in one of these squares because there's no six here, which means that's not six, which means that's not three. Uh, so we've we've reduced this down a little bit now. Oh, we've got a look, we've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in column four, the one of which is in that string. So this square is not a one. Um, these squares, are, okay, those squares are seven, eight, and nine, and that's fine because that's a purple line and it doesn't have to think about extending itself anywhere. And for our next trick, we will, what will we do? Oh, the, oh look, that's a five here. That's not five anymore. So this is seven and nine, which is, Right, which means that the grey line is a nine, eight, seven, six line. And that might be important for some reason. <laughs> Come on, brain, <laughs> work out what's going on. Uh, brain, brain has let me down there. Okay. 
So what is it that we do next here? I don't know. I've oh look, it's Sudoku, isn't it? Of course. Look at this row. I've got I've placed the digits approximately anyway, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is a naked single. It can only be an eight because it sees seven, nine in the column. So that's a seven, eight, nine now. This is not eight. This is set oh, that's seven or nine on a funny two oh no. Hang on, what's going on here? Right, I see. Okay, this line is also bogus. If this is a seven or a nine, and this was a two cell line, this would need to be an even digit to be consecutive with seven or nine. It would have to be six or eight, which it cannot be. So this is more than a two cell line, and therefore it's trotting off on a journey up to the top of the grid. I'm forced to use blue this time. So this is a fire oh that's so pretty oh i love that right the blue line has now become a five cell renban line now remember what we said at the start we said that a five cell renban line five cell purple line if you slice the digits one to nine you're always going to pick up a five on the line and the given five rules the five out of all of those cells so that must be a five which means there's a five in one of those two cells it means that okay now there has to be a six doesn't there because because this digit is higher than five even if it was seven there would have to be a six to bridge the gap so there is a six in one of those three positions so right uh, okay we might have already known this but now look at this box and ask where six goes because there's a six in one of those three cells, you can't put a six here or here, or you'd rule six out of the blue line. So six in this box looks to me like it has to go in one of those two positions. Don't really have a good way of pencil. That's really, that's done nothing. And all actually it's done is rule the six out of this cell because I could have used Sudoku before to pencil mark a six into all three of those positions. So that's really quite hopeless. Um, ah, no, okay. I see something else now. Let's look at fours. I think that's gonna be the next thing we need to think about. In fact, that digit is a naked single, that's a three. So maybe I can do even more if I apply myself to the uh, to the art of Sudoku. Um, but you know me and Sudoku scholarship. Those things don't tend to live in the same building very often. Right, what I've noticed is that this blue line can't have a four on it. That can't be a four. These can't be a four. So this line is nine, eight, seven, six, and five. So these squares at the top have got to include an eight for certain. They've got to be from six, seven, eight, and nine. Can we do better than that? I have a feeling we can. I just can't see how to do it with any sort of aplomb. Um, oh dear. Okay. So we're going to have, to, I think we're going to have to think harder. This has been reduced to two or four now. Does that mean I know more about this digit? No, it's still got all the options in the world. Uh, oh, but a two, four pair. No, okay. A two, four pair means that is restricted. That's come down to one or eight now. Four has to live in one of these three cells by Sudoku. Can we do better with fives? Yes, five, five. That cell seems to have to be a five. Another reason it couldn't have been a six, in fact. Um, so in this box, can we get the one? Yes, okay, by Sudoku, where does one go? Remember, there's a one in one of these three. There's a one in one of those three. So that's a one, that's gonna do work. So that becomes one, two, four. This becomes a two. This is now a three, four pair. This cell has become not a two. So that is a three, four pair in this column. So this top digit now is six, seven, eight or nine. We know it can't be six because that's going to ruin the world. 
So this is 7, 8 or 9. And this is 6, 7, 8 or 9. So it's quite a high digit in the context of this line, which is a real line. Um, now, can we do any better than this? What is going to help us to improve upon our situation? I don't know. I have a feeling we're going to have to worry any moment now. Oh, no, no. Hang on. Look at this box. I've got a 789 triple. That's the, so we can place the five. Look, this 789, where do they go in box three? Only into that cell as well. So that means that pushes the five over here. And it means that this, oh, this is great. Okay, I've now understood it last. Okay, if this line was just five, seven, eight, and nine, it wouldn't have a six on it and it wouldn't be consecutive. So where does it get a six from? The answer is over there. So this is, right, we can extend the greenliness then. So let's extend the greenliness all the way over there. This is a four, six pair. And we know that because there must be a nine on the line. So we know we're looking for a six, six cell six sequence starting from nine and going downwards. Um, this square by Sudoku is three or six. Okay, and it's the same as that digit because we know these are different. So these two digits are the same. That digit has to sit in the corner down here by Sudoku because it's not in those cells and it's not that digit. So this is a three, six pair in the bottom row. That square is now a naked single. That's got to be a four. That's the world's most useless four, isn't it? How do we do? How, do, how is this going to get disambiguated? Is there a simple way that we know the answer to that? Do we? There's got to be something we can do to figure that out. These squares by Sudoku are from 1, 2 and 4. We know there's a 2 on this line, but we don't know whether the line joins up over there. Um, there's a 2 on the line. So if the line... Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. If... If there was... If this was just a four cell line, it's got a two on it. So it would need to have a three and a four on it for sure. And we know that the four on it would be over here. So there would be a three here and either a five or a one. Well, it would have to be a three, five pair. And that would fix this digit. But if this extends, then this is an enormous sequence two couldn't repeat on the line so none of those cells could be a two could two go on this line and join to a six no so two would have to go there in box four that's crazy but but actually i think possible okay and i think this is the is this the only quandary that we have left I think it is. I think it is. We just have to figure out what's going on. What are these digits at the bottom of um, columns one and three? They accompany this digit, don't they? So we haven't put two into this box, right? So this is a two, seven, nine triple. And I'm desperately looking at that, trying to work out what that means and failing miserably. Uh, okay. No, I've got nothing. Far oh, five is on this line. I've just seen. That might be important. Oh, that's it. That's just, it's as simple as that. Right. Sorry. And this was very easy as soon as we got that we did a bit of Sudoku. Now, this line, this horseshoe has a five on it. So if it was a torus and it joined up with this line, there would be two fives on the line and that's not going to work. So this sits on its own 
And that's beautiful, actually, because remember, there's a two on this line for certain, and it's a four cell line. So it must have a four on it, and we know where the four goes. So that has become a two four pair, which means this is a one in the corner. That's a four. Um, one is now in one of those cells. So there's no right. So there's no one on this line. So these squares have got to be a three five pair, which means this square's a six. Remember, this square is different from this one. So that's got to be the three. That's got to be the six. Now, can we keep this going? That's the question. And the answer is, oh, this looks so weird. <laughs> this is a seven and a nine on a purple line. Um, this square is seven, eight or nine, isn't it? Okay. Can I do the order of the two, four and the three, five somehow? Maybe, or maybe there's some Sudoku to be done over here, actually. Because if we look at the, oh, there's a seven, eight, nine triple. So that's six. Oh, goodness me. Should have seen that before. So these digits, which have to be real digits. Oh, look. Yeah. And there has to be a six on this line, doesn't there? Because that blue line needed a six on it. So that six is now in one of those two positions. Oh, and that, look, this gorgeous, good grief. The six up here sees that cell. So that's got to be four, that's got to be six, that's got to be six, that's got to be eight, that's got to be three, that's got to be four. Which means that, oh, I was about to say that's a four, but I've already got a four here, so we can get rid of the four pencil marks. There's a four in one of these cells. The four can't go on this line because it would need a five to be sequential with six and five can't go on the line. So the four goes there which may be useful, he says, desperately hoping for some something clever and failing to see it. But OK, can we say, right, there's no five on this line. So it must be going up from six. That must be a seven, eight pair, which means this square has become a nine. Take nine out of all the other blue squares, therefore. So this square is rather cute because it sees a six, seven, eight, um, triple. So it must be none of those digits. That's a nine. These are not nine anymore. That's not nine at the bottom. That seems to have to be seven. So that's seven, eight, nine all going into the grid. This is now become a six, seven pair. So that's become an eight, an eight, nine pair. That becomes seven. That becomes eight. Take eight out of these squares. The seven, eight pair here does things. That's a six. That's a seven. Um, that square, look, has to be a two by Sudoku. So that's a seven by Sudoku. That we can put eight up here by Sudoku. Um, in this box, we need to put one, two, three, and nine. So this is a two, three pair. This is a one, nine pair. That square there has to therefore be seven. And I think we might be, I don't want to speak too soon, but it feels like that latest flurry has been helpful. Right, you can't put nine now on this on this purple line, because if you do put nine on it, you need to put seven and eight and six on it. So nine must be here, which means that's going to be nine. That's going to be one. This column needs a something, a three. <laughs> um, that's a three, that's a five. Okay, and that nine, oh, that's finally getting us over here, look. So that becomes an eight, that becomes an eight, that becomes a nine. This is a gorgeous puzzle, it really is. There's an awful lot of cleverness that has been instilled and, inf and infused into this one. Um, now, I need a one, two, three triple to finish off this row, look. So that's a one, and this has got to be a two, and that's got to be a three. That's a four, therefore, so all of that goes in. This becomes a one, two pair. These squares are a one, five pair. So I can do it. <laughs> okay, I was just, just checking my Sudoku was working. Uh, so that's a two and a four. I need to put, uh, what's going on now? Is This is a seven, that's a nine, isn't it, by Sudoku? So nine, eight, eight, seven. And that seems to be the puzzle filled. Let's click tick. Yay, we did it. Absolutely brilliant. Loved that. Loved it. Um, 
it's quite tricky to start it actually so yeah so you have to I don't think actually the start was up here was it I think the start was thinking about this and noticing that bizarrely these two black dots are really restricted because because this one couldn't be a torus that was the whole key and you can't put one on it and once we got that we were at least able to get some traction into the grid and finish why is it called mozzarella is that something to do with the way mozzarella stretches i don't know oh i don't understand that that's that's made me feel a bit simple um anyway i'll, I'll rely on you guys to explain it thanks so much for watching mark will be back later with another christmas edition of cracking the cryptic we are going to be uh in, well we are certainly intending to be full service over the christmas holidays so there should be there should be videos on christmas eve on on christmas day and boxing day we haven't missed a day yet since the start of lockdown so wish us luck and i wish you all the best for the festive season and um, let me know how you enjoyed the puzzle. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.